Hi there, Christian Henson from Spitfire Audio here. I'm going to be creating a tension bed and looking at how I go about doing that. I imagine it would be for some kind of thriller, some procedural thing. So I want a very kind of clean sound with a kind of hyped orchestra. Now, I'm using the studio strings and I've been quite excited about diving in with these for this use because studio strings, by their name, are recorded in a controlled environment. So not a hall, not a church. It is a studio, just like you would a drum kit. Now, the acoustic sound of a kit in a room is a fantastic thing, just like with strings. But we also like to have a more controlled sound, and that's when we all put them in a, in a studio, close mic them, and be able to do all sorts of extraordinary things with the kit. Now, a lot of people have asked me, do we really need another strings library? Well, for me, it's kind of like saying to Eric Clapton, are you sure you've got enough guitars there? It's really about giving a choice. For me, uh, having a new set of tools that kind of make me work differently is exciting but the inner kind of record producer in me wants to get into these strings and as I said because they're in a controlled environment it means I can control the sound and create all sorts of synth string hybrids and really tracked orchestras and tight interesting tension beds with ostinatos that kind of stuff it's not trying to sound like a kind of massive orchestra it's not trying to be realistic it's using an orchestra to create a, a kind of a, a human organic tension within quite a kind of techie bet. So let's jump into it. I'm going to start with my kind of backing track, if you will. For those of you who've been watching my vlog, linked below, uh, I've been bitten by the modular bug and uh, no less so by the DFAM drummer from another mother by Moog. Absolutely fantastic. And particularly for drama because it creates loops that aren't recognizably drum kits. So let's just have a listen to uh, this loop that I recorded direct out of the DFAM. So what I'm going to do first with that is add a, an auto filter in Logic and that just basically messes around with the, the filtering automatically and a bit of delay to turn it into this. But you're not actually going to hear that because what I'm going to do is just send that out of this bus here as a carrier signal for this vocoder. So if we just run that, I'll be able to play that live. Carrier signal is bus 2. Doesn't play anything until... And then what I did with the, the loop itself is I literally just split it up into its constituent parts and spread it out across different tracks doing different things. So this one's got an auto filter and a delay on it. And this has just got a kind of low pass filter. This has got a bit of distortion and also a bit of distortion and a bit of tremolo. So we've got the first track. And I'm using the kind of DC offset, the glitches actually as part of the loop. And then let's add in this. It's kind of go, Ooh. that's the bit there. And then this third bit. And then this bit here. And then further down, we actually have to switch to a more of a three, four feel here. somewhat ambiguous 3-4. I've got that all coming out of a massive bus, bus 3, with a low-pass filter on. I've got the low-pass filter automated up from the beginning. And I time-stretched a part of the rhythm and reversed it and normalised it and made it this kind of strange reversey squelch just to give us a sense of we're going towards something. I've then got Olaf Arnold's amazing felt piano. Okay, so I'll put some delays on there. And I've got this as a low pass filtering up here. I also duplicated that and added the AU pitch, which is the my favorite Apple pitch plugin. And if you look here, we've got a little delightful pitching thing here. I've also got this uh, gain switcher. So I've swapped left and right. So basically when you're playing up here, it's more, the, because we did a very broad recording of Olafur's piano, it's more, you know, the microphone up here is stimu being stimulated, so I just flipped it. Now, that is a feature of this entire piece. Because what I decided to do is create a tracked orchestra. 
Now, the great thing about Studio Strings, which is fantastic for dialogue, is it's very, very broad. But as you'll hear with the kind of parts I'm playing, I'm playing these very high, slow, no prizes for orchestral programming kind of swells. And I wanted a very broad sound, and it's very left-centric. So I thought, well... It's a studio, so let's do things like track and stack. So basically, if you have a look, I'm starting with some harmonics there, but what's really interesting is if we have a look at the flautandos, which is what I always write with, I'm using the close mics and the outriggers. The close mics give it the really direct signal, the outriggers give it a kind of a, a broad stereo, just slightly fill out the space. If you see, I've got those, and I've got the seconds. These, by the way, are my template multis. When I'm learning a new library, what I tend to do is load up all of the possible combinations so I can, like a synth, just you know, switch between the patches. It can become quite cumbersome to work with, however. So you'll see that I've got the firsts and the seconds, both playing flout handos. Now, when I go down to here, this first flout hando LR, what you'll notice is it's transposed up two, which will basically mean that instead of playing a C when we play a C, it'll play a D. And the problem is that that'll obviously sound horrible. So what I've then done is I've tuned it down to. So ostensibly what I'm doing is I'm playing exactly the same parts, but accessing different samples. When I'm playing a C, it's playing a D tuned back down to the C. So what this gives is a nice, full, rich sound without any phasing. And then what I've done is I've just used used a gain switcher there and I flipped left and right. So first I'll just play the original flat handers which will be slightly to the left because that's where they're, they're sat, the first and the second. It's great, it's just such a controllable sound. You can really hear that there's so much you can do with that. You're not gonna have to be kind of wrestling with a hall and loads of mics and room tone. It's just, it's a very direct signal, which is yours for the messing with. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is add in some, and this is, I'm just doing this over in this screen here. I'm just gonna unmute the reverb that I assigned, which is the fab filter. Let's have a quick look at that. Just the default fab filter. So let's hear it with that. So it's still relatively short, I'm not trying to imitate the hall or anything like that, but it's got quite a nice warm feel, not too metallic. And then I'm going to unmute a delay. And again, you know, for anyone who's recorded anything poppy, if you're working with a singer, it's as much about delay as it is about reverb. And this delay, I actually work with it with these swells, so we've got... And this is when I go between, is it a synth, is it strings? Again, I'm using what's recorded in the studio to give me a processed hybrid sound. But then I add in the tracked orchestra with the left and right panned. Let's have a listen to that. So that's kind of an antiphon orchestra, and I think that that's very exciting to listen to. And finally, because the, the violas are pretty much just off-center, I've just also added uh, uh, violas and just left like single set of violas right in the middle there, just to fill out that hole in the middle. It's great. It's got a, it's got a live sound, but it's got a kind of synthetic element too. For the choruses, if you will, I'm kind of tracking up with harmonics some consordinos and some legatos to really dig out a certain kind of passing line. So I've gone up two and I've tuned down two and I've flipped the left and right here, swap on. And so let's listen to that. And for me, this doesn't sound like a bigger orchestra, it sounds like a tracked orchestra, just like you would with vocals, like you go to the chorus and you get the vocalist to sing exactly the same thing twice and you pan at quarter two, quarter past. We basically just uh, pretty much duplicate everything that goes on in the first verse. I add some octaves in there and then we really introduce these consordino parts at the end there. Now, a real feature of this track is the ostinatos. And what I love about these recordings are the the piccato sound like how a band would play it so they, they have all that kind of rosin you know a lot less note than the actual sound of the string so what i've done again i've done a tracking and stacking technique with the violas and the cellos but also what i've enjoyed is i've got the time machine versions of the spiccato so if we have a little play of this super tight and what i'm going to do is take the stretch to where they were before 
and you could also stretch it the other way. It does start to sound a bit funky, but again, what I'm enjoying about this studio environment is it suits the less kind of puritanical approach. So I'm just gonna take that stretch all the way back there. And then if we listen to the originals, and then we're gonna add the tracked and stacked version. And I purposely not played the exact same part on both tracks, so we have a little bit of panning fun. But when I programmed that in, it reminded me of my favorite bass line of all time, Mirror in a Bathroom. And what's so amazing about that bass line is they actually employ the use, it sounds like, of a uh, cello playing unison pizzicatos. So I decided for the second part to use some cello pizzicatos playing in octaves. And I actually put a little bit of EQ on that because it's a bit kind of woofy. bit more controlled and then again I tracked and stacked that so let's put the EQ on and again didn't play exactly the same thing when you listen to it through you may find wow that is really bright but you'd be surprised how say for example I just worked on a hospital drama the noise of a hospital just drowns out gets rid of all of that top end and if you're working in film also for this kind of stuff where you want it to sound bright and tight and fat. So I'm pre-compensating for these factors that suck out the, the top end. And for this kind of mix, you want it sounding bright, high-tech, hi-fi. And that's where this library has really clicked for me. It's a controlled environment, just like instead of recording your drum kit in your hallway, you're recording it in a controlled environment to get a tight sound, a sound that you can alter and mess with. You can isolate single individual elements and put them into different effects, pan them, track them, all of that kind of stuff. Anyway, thanks as always for listening. If you like what we do, hit like. If you haven't subscribed yet, lots more material about Studio Strings coming up. And if you're interested in Studio Strings, want to find out more, hit the link down below. If you want to be notified the next time we post something, just hit the little bell icon. Thanks again. See you again soon. Bye-bye.